Oh my goodness, someone just made me laugh. He's sitting over there, guess who? Hey everyone! <laughs> welcome, welcome to this cooking class. We're gonna have a bit of fun today because it literally is a class on how to eat kale and to cook it so it doesn't suck. Because let's be honest here, let's be brutally honest when it comes to kale. It doesn't have the greatest reputation. Like some people love it, they just think it's the bee's knees, but there is the majority of the population that kind of go, you know what? I don't really need to have this in my life. So um, I thought I, I would do a class, a very cook, quick, cooking class. Good morning Georgina mwah, mwah, to you and your beautiful mom. I hope you guys are well and hi to Barb as well. Hi to Barb who's watching us. So um, kale. Now why kale? Why even bother with kale? Because there's all these other vegetables that you could include into your diet. But you know this is this is not just a, a, a class about kale. This is a class about celebrating vegetables and realizing that there are certain ways or methods of cooking that we can use to make certain vegetables taste really incredible. Because at the end of the day, who cares that it's kale, right? Who cares if it tastes good? If it tastes good, you're eating it. I know I'm there as well. And then you say to me, oh, but it's really good for your body in all these amazing ways. I'm totally, totally there. So um, when it comes to food, cooking, vegetables, you know, other types of food that may not on the surface look very appealing and look very delicious, but if you know how to cook it, and if you know that cooking it in this method will make it taste amazing, you're there, right? I'm, I'm like that, I'm sure you're like that as well. So kale is one of those vegetables. It's daunting, you know, it is kind of like, really? How am I gonna eat that? Check this out, right? Oh my God, that, I mean, just look at that. That is a very daunting prospect. You see that in the veggie shop, that's a bunch of kale. You see that in the veggie shop and you go, mm, I'm not overwhelmed <laughs> right now. I'm totally not overwhelmed with what I'm seeing, what's going on here. And um, I get it, I totally get it because I feel the same way when I look at kale. I look at kale and I just think, that's a daunting prospect. Like, you expect me to eat that? That looks like I'm, I'm eating basically a garden, like, you know, without doing anything to it. And not a nice garden, not a pretty garden, not a delicious garden, but just like, you want me to eat grass. This is kind of what it looks like. So, um, kale has had a good rap and it's also had quite a bad negative rap of recent because you know um, a lot of people think of kale as being kind of hippie food and and um, it's it's cool so everyone's eating it but why is everyone eating it? There's a reason why everyone's eating it so let's firstly talk about the reason why everyone's eating it and why when you look at that big bunch of kale sitting there in your supermarket um, shelf or in your veggie shop why you go, yes, I need to put that into my basket because I want to include kale into my diet. So the reason why kale is, has had such a rise in popularity over the last couple of years is kale is one of the most nutrient dense vegetables that we can consume. And when we talk about what is nutrient dense, that means that there are so many vitamins and minerals naturally occurring in this, you know, this bouquet of kale and it's so incredibly dense, meaning there's lots and lots and lots of them. So you're getting the most incredible nutrient hit, vitamin hit, when you consume this. You know, you can eat other vegetables. They're not gonna be even nearly as high in nutrients and goodness as kale, whereas this is dense. And you can kind of, you can hear it's dense, right? It feels dense, it is dense. So kale is one of the most nutrient dense vegetables we can consume. It is also what we know as a dark leafy green. And dark leafy greens, you know we need to include more and more of these in our diet. So this is one way that we can do it. So with these massive, massive amounts of vitamins and minerals and also antioxidants, and antioxidants are like our soldiers and they go out into our body and they fight off what is known as free radicals. And free radicals are what causes disease and illness. This is high in antioxidants, meaning you've got lots of soldiers in here, they're gonna go into your body and it's gonna fight off all those free radicals, which is disease and illness. So all these amazing, amazing benefits, amazing benefits. Did you also know that kale is also really high in omega-3, which is a fatty acid. Now don't think it's got fat in it, I mean it's got, fatty acids, but it's not fat. I mean, this is so low in calories, it's almost not, not funny. Dense and low in calories. Um, but it's got omega-3. Omega-3 is good for your brain health, 
really important to start to think about looking after our brain health. And this is one of the vegetables, one of the ingredients that you can start including in your diet that's gonna to start to look after your brain health. I mean, that's incredible, right? This is not only just gonna fight off disease and illness, increase your immune system so you get to fight off disease and illness, but it's also going to start to protect the health of our brain, which is so incredibly important. And is it good for weight loss? Probably the big question you're asking yourself is 100% is this stuff good for weight loss? Low in calories, no fat, completely natural, all these amazing vitamins and minerals, good for your gut health, all those sort of things. But you know, one of the things that, that I really appreciate about, appreciate about kale is it's filling. So it makes you feel satisfied and full because your belly is feeling full because it's a dense vegetable. All right, so kale hits all the, all the or ticks all the, all, all the boxes, hits all the buttons when it comes to um, its nutrient availability for our bodies and how good it is for us to eat. But also what is one of the things that kale does really, really well is it's quite versatile, believe it or not. I know it's daunting. And um, kale comes in many different varieties as well. So what I have here is kind of a, a light green one. You might get it in a, quite a dark green. It also comes in purple. Some, this one is quite a short curly kind of a kale. It's short and curlies. <laughs> it's the short and curlies of kale, in case you were wondering. Short and curly. Um, but you might also find kale can be quite long and elongated in different colours. So um, don't think you have to buy this particular kale. Just go into your veggie shop and find the kale that you want. But all that aside, right? Good for my body, you know, really good for my brain health, long calories, good for weight loss, you know, all that sort of wonderful stuff, which is absolutely pointless if it sucks when it comes to how it tastes because let's be honest if it doesn't taste good chances of you putting it into your shopping basket decreases dramatically so this cooking class is going to give you a few little tips just a couple of little tips that's all you need to give you the versatility and give you that little bit of encouragement to go out and pop that into your shopping basket we're gonna make it delicious. We're gonna make it not suck. And it's really easy. It's really, really, really easy when you know how. So, um, as I was saying before, I actually had this, this is like a normal bunch of kale. So, you know, like that's crazy stuff, right? That is crazy stuff. And I actually bought three bunches of kale from my local veggie shop for five bucks, which is a pretty good deal. And we had, um, myself and Mahe, we ate one bunch yesterday. We had it for our lunch. And I'm just gonna teach you guys, show you guys exactly how we cooked it. And how we cooked it was delicious. Like both of us are sitting there looking at each other just going, oh my God, this is delicious. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that how to cook your kale, but as well as cooking your kale, you can actually eat it raw. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how do you eat it raw? Um, so there is a couple little steps here, but nothing major, nothing that's gonna freak you out, but it's actually gonna improve the quality of your experience when you're eating it, and it's a very simple step. So come on down to my beach, join me down here. Let's have a little look what's going on. All we have here is this big bunch of kale. But um, what you can see is um, that with, when it comes to the kale, I'll just take out one stalk. So that's what it looks like, right? It's a stalk of kale. So you want to, you don't want to eat the stalks. You definitely don't want to eat that. You want to kind of discard that. What we actually want is just the leaves. So the easiest way to take off the leaves is just to just hold the stalk at one end and just drag your hand down like that and you actually have the stalk that you can discard and all you're left with is the leaves. Now, um, the way I'm showing you first and foremost is how we're gonna do it if you were to put it through a salad and yes, you can put it through a salad. Like on its face right now, would you consider eating that? Probably not. And you know what? I wouldn't blame you either. I'd be like, yeah, not gonna do that. There's a way that we can actually improve this kale even for eating raw. First thing that you wanna do is you want to take it into smaller pieces because I don't even want to put that in my mouth. That, that seems like a lot of work. So make sure that you break the leaves into manageable pieces. Just like just break them into manageable pieces. Something bite-sized that you would be completely okay with popping into your mouth and not have to fight the curly bits, right? So break it into small pieces is my first suggestion. And once you have broken your kale into small pieces, remember we're doing the raw version first and then I'm gonna show you the cooked version next. Um, once you've broken it into small pieces, what you then want to do is something I actually learned from my aunties and my grandma many, 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 many years ago. So in um, um, 
New Zealand, what we do, what I've always done as a, as a young child, is we would always forage our, our leafy greens. And that would literally mean that we'd go into the garden or we'd go around the house and we would pick what is essentially weeds in some people's garden, but to Māori people is actually a staple part of our diet. So we would put, pick a very um, leafy, dark leafy green called puha. Looks a little bit different to that, l longer leaves, and um, but it's quite a bitter leafy green. So once my aunties in the mid picked it, what they would then do is they would take the puha and they would, they would strip it like the thick stalks, ending up with something a little bit more like this. And then, and this is what you need to do with your kale, is they would actually start to rub and massage the puha. So what you want to do with your kale is you want to rub and massage it. What is happening when my aunties were doing that all those many years ago, I used to think, well, why are they taking the time to do that? It's not, I just thought it was dirt they were removing. But what they were actually doing, and this is what it comes down to, right? This is like traditional knowledge of what my aunties and their, and you know, my grandmother and my great grandparents and my great grand grandparents have been doing for years is knowing that these really fibrous vegetables and, um, and kale is a very fibrous vegetable. What you need to do is you need to break down the cellulose in there, those fiber structures. And the best way to do that is actually to give it a bit of a massage, just like that. Give it a little bit of a squish. When you've squished it like that, not only are you going to break the fibers, make them smaller, so it's a lot more pleasant to eat, but also when those fibers are smaller, it's not going to be as bitter. So thank you to my aunties and my grandma for showing me this all those many years ago when it came to our traditional foods, which is our puha and even down to our watercress as well, is they would massage the vegetables raw in their hands. And what happens when you're doing that is you're breaking down those cellulose fibers and you're creating smaller fibers, which is gonna be more pleasant to eat, easier to eat, but also we're getting rid of some of that bitterness as well. So once you have it and you've done that little massage, you can go ahead and, and, and um, give it a bit of a wash, really important. Give it a little bit of wash in, in cold running water. So you know, take up, you know, like one of these colanders, pop it in there, or your massaged kale. Because look at just even just looking at this, how different does it look? Raw massaged already. It looks so much more, you know, easier for you to navigate when it comes to eating. So if you're eating it raw make sure you massage it. If you're cooking it, you don't have to do the massage part because the cooking actually helps to break down those, those fibers. But if you're eating it raw, give it a massage. Give it some time. Spend some time with your kale. Give it a bit of a rub, a loving rub. So it looks like that. You've broken down those fibers. It's less bitter. And then it goes into your colander and you just run it under cold running water. So once it's wet, just pretend it's wet. Pretend I've cleaned it. I've given it a good little shake here. It's all wet. Then what you want to do, because you're making a salad, right? What you want to do is just pick it up in your hands like this. Like just hold it really gently and literally shake like that. That motion, chefs use it all the time, will get rid of any excess water because salad dressing does not stick to wet leaves. So if you want your dressing to really adhere well to your salad, then you need to just gently like I'm not, I'm not actually holding it firm, I'm just holding it really gently. And when you do that shaking action, you'll get rid of all the leftover water. If you've got a salad spinner, pop it in the salad spinner, make it nice and dry before you add it to your salad and add salad dressing to it. So that's the first way to make kale not suck. Raw, yeah? Massage, massage, massage. All right, the next step, step I'm gonna show you is actually for cooked kale. So I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna put my massage stuff over here. Now, so when it comes to cooking your kale, and cooking your kale is um, is absolutely wonderful as well. Don't get me wrong; I actually really like the cooked kale version. So when it comes to cooking your kale, once again, make sure that you are breaking your kale up into smaller pieces. So you don't want big pieces of kale. You want it to be manageable. Always, always manageable. So you know, take your stalk and just run, remember that. Just run your hand down if it breaks then all you need to do is just go ahead and do that. Manageable pieces, lovely manageable pieces. Yes, guess what I'm having for lunch today. Now, oh, here's something to remember. If you, um, because K 
kale is a cruciferous vegetable. So it sits within the cabbage family with, along with broccoli and cauliflower and all those types of vegetables. So if you suffer from IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome, just go really carefully when it comes to kale. I find that you can't eat massive amounts of it. Um, people who are IBS sufferers, some people can handle it really, really, really well. Um, but if you do have IBS or you have an irritable bowel or your stomach, your digestion is not the greatest. When it comes to these cruciferous vegetables, which are, as I was saying, the cauliflowers, the broccolis, the Brussels sprouts, the cabbage, and the kale, just go gently. Don't overload yourself with kale. See how your body reacts. And if your body's been good, then you can go for it. But you know, if you find that People who have IBS, they find with cruciferous vegetables that they get bloating and cramping and um, just don't feel that comfortable because that's inflammation taking over. It might be one that you just have, you can still eat it, just not much, just not much. So I've got my kale, as you can see, I've got this big, this isn't even one bunch, look at that, that's not even one bunch. I'm going to finish it off because I want to show you guys how one bunch of kale that starts off looking like that can then go into quite a manageable, a manageable um, way to eat it. And that's what we want to do. Because you, you know, you wouldn't eat a, ro a whole bowl of this. You would, yeah, you would absolutely die. Well, you wouldn't die. In fact, it'd be really healthy, but my goodness, your palate would be bored. And this is all about having excitement on our palate. And yes, of course, you can make kale chips, which is done in the air fryer. And I have a recipe for kale chips. And I do believe, I can't even remember what ebook it's in now. Kale chips, do you know Mahi? What even nah, art Mahi doesn't know either? Sorry guys, I can't remember. I've got a few ebooks, but this kind of recipe is to celebrate the fact that we released our um, our healthy plant-based ebook yesterday. Bridgetshealthyveggies.com. If anyone wants to purchase that, you can order it now. That is ready to go. And it's 50 plant-based recipes, vegetarian, vegan recipes. Everyone's looked after in that ebook. So there's your kale. That's what it looks like. Daunting AF, right? Now that I've got it in this sort of size pieces, I'm going to take it over to the sink and give it a and give it a wash. Bear with me. Very important step. Running cold running water. Make sure you're tossing it, you're tossing it up and down. Pretend that I have done that for ages and ages and ages and have created a very clean a very uh, clean kale. So you wanna do that, you wanna make sure that you have the cold running water over your kale. Give it a really, really good clean because there'll be potentially bugs. There'll be just a little bit of dirt, all that sort of stuff. You wanna wash all that off. So that's the first step. The next step, I'm gonna bring my little machine closer, closer to us, hello, there we go. Turning on, got my, got my frying pan in there. My nice wok, my nice little wok's going on. I'm going to turn this on to medium to high temperature. Medium to high. Give my bench a bit of a wipe down at the same time. Yeah. All right, medium to high. Want that to heat up. Kale's washed. Bite-sized pieces, yeah? Manageable, manageable pieces. I'm then going to take what you guys all know so very well. It's the last of my sticky sauce. I need to make some more today. Sticky sauce. We're going to put that into the frying pan. Couple of tablespoons for one bunch of kale. Couple of tablespoons. I'm then going to take up my oh so favorite freshly chopped ginger. Couple of tablespoons go in there. Let the sticky sauce start to cook that gorgeous gorgeous ginger couple tablespoons freshly chopped garlic is also going to go in there once again couple of tablespoons if you really like ginger add more if you really like garlic add more if someone in your house has got a cold add more you know that's just such a wonder these are such wonderful ingredients to use and all we've done here is that little bit of sticky sauce, right? And now we're cooking up those onions and that ginger. We're creating some flavor. We're giving them time to saute, which is really, really important. Take our washed kale and just biff it in. Now I want you to consider that what we have here is 
a dish that is so incredibly simple to make and all you're doing is literally stir frying it yeah and you're breaking it down you're allowing it time to break down you're allowing it time to cook in your frying pan i've only added half at a time because it you know it's it's not the largest frying pan you want to cook it in, in batches and you would sort of allow it time to start doing its thing and that's all it's doing that's, this is all you're doing to it you're just giving it time to cook you're giving it time to mellow you're giving those fibers the opportunity to break down and already remember i started off with a really big big um pan and already it's broken down so incredibly nicely so incredibly nicely so that is looking good last stage a little bit of kombu we're going to create a little bit of a steam environment in there not much probably like you know half not even half a cup maybe a third of a cup of kombu goes in there and now i've created a steam environment so we're beginning to steam our kale it's got the flavors there from the ginger and the garlic and we are creating look how flat it is now you can hardly even see it it's like you can hardly see it and we're just going to allow this some time a bit more i'm going to add just a little bit more of kombu so not only are you, you sauteing your um your kale but you're also creating this like mini gravy from the kombu and the ginger and the garlic and the sticky sauce you're creating a little gravy so I'm just going to let that do its thing, just for a couple of minutes. We're going to add in a little bit of salt, a little bit of natural sea salt flakes. The ones with, you know, mineral salt is what you're wanting. Some mineral salt goes in there. Could be Himalayan, could be uh, Murray River pink salt, or any of those really good natural salts work well. Minerals, we always want to add minerals to our diet. And now just a little, a little um, fresh mill of black pepper goes in there and you allow this to continue to cook just for a minute we're breaking down the fibers and we're creating an absolutely delicious delicious flavor so what I want you guys to think of when it comes to kale is kale is kind of a cross between spinach I'm not talking about spinach you buy in the bags I'm talking about spinach that's still attached to its stalk and its roots so proper spinach I mean not that the stuff you buy in the bag isn't proper but you know a proper you know bunch of spinach and um, kale is a cross between spinach and silver beet or Swiss chard so on the very extreme of the flavor scale you have spinach which is come up here so we can talk on the very extreme end of the flavor scale you have spinach and spinach is quite sweet and um, it's quite simple to eat if you if you've eaten spinach especially cooked before you know that and then on the other end of the flavor scale you have silver beet or chard and silver beet or chard is quite big flavored it's robust it's described as being earthy and so you have this really robust flavor now you guys know if you've ever cooked spinach uh, sorry silver beet or swiss chard you know it actually takes some time to cook because once again what you're doing is you're breaking down those fibers treat kale cooking wise very similar to silver beet or swiss chard it takes a bit of time not as much as silver beet but it does take a bit of time to break down those cellulose fibers whereas spinach you put it in the pan and like one second later you have this big bunch of spinach and then you have like that much spinach after one second it doesn't take very long so just always think of kale treat it similar to silver beet or swiss chard and you are going to be winning so come on back down here have a look what's going on Oh, we got a question. Yes, go one second, Mahi. You can see how it's broken down now. This is now not just edible, this is now delicious. This is wonderful. Make sure you have a bit of a taste, even though it's going to be really hot. Have a little bit of a taste. Oh. The garlic and the ginger, absolutely wonderful. How would you serve this? There's a couple ways that you can serve it. You can Cook it down till it's really, really soft, just like silver beet. And that will take probably another couple more minutes than what I have here. Really, really cook it down. It gets lovely and tender, very, very easy to eat. Um, you can serve that, and we actually served it, would you believe? We served it with a couple of fried eggs yesterday. So we had the spinach on the, as the bed, fried eggs on top, broke the yolk, it went all through the creamy yolk, went all through the, uh, sorry, the kale. That was delicious. 
but any type of vegetable, green vegetable, you know, on the side of fish, on the side of meat, anything you want. You can also, at this stage, pop that, um, pop some meat in there and do a stir fry as well. So there's many, many ways that you can do it. If you really want to break the kale down so it's really, really tender, I've got one more method for you guys. I'm just going to verbalize it. You don't have to see it because it's pretty easy to do. So what you do is you start with a large pot of water, bring that water to the ball, pinch of salt, half one teaspoon of baking soda, and then you plunge your kale into there for a couple of minutes, and that water, just like you're boiling a vegetable, right? It'll boil away. You drain it off, drain it really well, and then it goes into your frying pan, just like we did with the, um, with the garlic, the ginger, and the sticky sauce. So it's gonna be even more tender than this method here. But it's up to you, I quite like a little bit of texture from my kale. It tastes amazing, which is the main thing. It tastes so good, I can't wait for lunch. We've gotta to go, to we go to the gym first and work out before I can have lunch, I'm so excited. I've got a question, yes Mahi? When you cook the next batch, do you add more ginger garlic? When you cook the next batch, did you add more ginger or garlic? Um, you can add a little bit, you don't have to add as much. We definitely don't have to add as much because you can see that liquid that I have there, you can use that. That's the liquid you can use and you've got ginger and garlic all around the edges. You can add a little bit, but once again, let your taste buds guide you on how much ginger to add and how much garlic to add. Yes, Mahi? Jill Wilson asks, can you use it in a quiche or an impossible pie? Yes, you can. You can totally use it in all those things. If you're putting it straight into a quiche or an impossible pie, do the massage, break it into really small pieces and give it that little bit of a massage to break down those, those fibers and then pop it into your pie or your quiche. Um, treat it like a, like a bit of spinach in that case, yeah. Oh my God, this is so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stop nibbling. Do we have any more questions? Yes? Uh, how long does your ginger last in the fridge? How long does my ginger last in the fridge? About a week and a half to two weeks, actually. My ginger lasts really, really long. Now the ginger at the moment that I purchased was quite a young ginger. So it's got even more shelf life on it. You'll know it's a young ginger. It does look slightly different from the, um, the older variety. Not so fibrous, I find. So that's my, oh, you can't see, but that's my young ginger. And I did this over a week ago and it's already, it's still looking really, really good. I, I definitely keep my ginger in a um, container, sealed container, but you can also keep it in a little plastic bag um, once it's already pre-chopped as well. So great question. Kale, how to make it not suck. Remember, massage it if you're doing it raw, you're putting it into a product raw. Cook it either straight in the pan with some kombu, ginger, garlic, and sticky sauce, or if you want it to be really tender, so it's more like spinach, blanch it first in boiling water with a pinch of baking soda, which is gonna to help to keep that green flavor, and then saute it off. Multiple uses for kale. Remember, it's really nutrient dense, really good for weight loss, really good for brain health high 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 in vitamins and minerals and antioxidants it is so good for us we need to all be eating more kale so i hope you enjoyed today's class like i said i'm off to the gym wish me luck take care talk soon bye